and welcome to the online worship services for Island Creek United Methodist Church, Mount Plains United Methodist Church, and Fancy Gap United Methodist Church. If you'll join with me in prayer. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. And we thank you so much that in these days and in these moments that we can pause and remember you, most especially in the season of Advent. And we ask that you help us remember you each day and to share your love with others. Amen. We want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it is tradition, because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirit of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. We light these candles as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of this season, not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things. The beauty of the heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and in hospitality. We light this candle of joy because company is coming. The scripture for today comes from Luke 1, 46 through 55. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lonely state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the, the lonely. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One Christmas Eve many years ago, a pastor recounted the story of Christmas. He spoke of how Jesus came and was born in the manger. He spoke of why that was important. After the service, when the church members began leaving the church, one of the members walked up to him. They told him that the service was very good. However, he forgot one very important thing. In the whole service, he never mentioned Mary. Over the years, I have found that when telling the Christmas story, we tell it both with a degree of awe, but also as a rote memory. As a young girl, I often thought about Mary. I wondered how she felt. I wonder if she ever wanted to say, no, not me, pick somebody else, please. After all, she wouldn't have been the first to tell God that. But then I stumbled across this passage of scripture. When you think of all the people who said no to God, Moses, Jonah, David, we have the names of those great men, but here is this young girl, and it seems that she is in a way braver than these great men. This passage of scripture is one that is nothing short of pure worship. Is it any wonder then 
that Mary was the one chosen to be Jesus' mother. In that moment, she wasn't thinking about how hard her life would be. She wasn't thinking about how hard her son's life would be. She couldn't have known then that in just a few short decades that she would be standing there watching as the child that she was gifted with was taken from her. She couldn't have known any of that. What she did know is what we read here. It is often called Mary's song. Her words are quite extraordinary. In this moment, she is speaking to her family member, Elizabeth, who herself is pregnant with John the Baptist. Her words of worship tell us not just about her relationship with God, but also about how God might have been understood by the people then. She begins by saying how her spirit is rejoicing in God. She also acknowledges that she is not someone who was rich or powerful, but someone who is one of the common people. In this, Mary is displaying humility. All generations will call me blessed. She was right when she said that. We today all remember her and remember how it was Mary who helped raise the Son of God. She speaks of how God has done great things for her, but her words do not end with what God has done for her. She goes on to speak of words of worship for what God did for his people before that very moment and even after. We know the stories, but Mary's words sum them up well. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lonely. Her words also seem to foreshadow the teachings of Jesus. Many times we hear him speak to the rich and tell them that to follow God, they must leave their riches behind. He spoke to the poor and assured them that even when they had nothing, absolutely nothing, they still had the love of God. Mary also speaks of the family of Abraham and Jacob who became Israel. We know that God made a promise with them, and it seems that Mary knew it too. On this, the third Sunday of Advent, we light the candle to remember the joy of the season. What can be more joyful than finding out that you will have a child? Mary's story has sometimes been pushed aside in the recognition of Jesus' birth. But Mary's role in the story is one of strength and faith. A few years ago, I was talking to my youth group. I asked them something that today I'm afraid I don't remember. But then one of them answered, looking at me with hope and joy in her face. Was it Mother Mary? Yes, it was Mary that was the answer to the question. Ever since then, I have recalled that moment because in it, I was reminded of how much love that Mary showed not only to her son and to her God, but to us today by making the choice to accept what God asked. That day, when talking with the angel Gabriel, no one would have blamed Mary for saying no. To be pregnant and unmarried today isn't necessarily socially accepted. Then, to be pregnant and unmarried would have meant you would be worthy of stoning. But that day, Mary didn't say no. She 
he instead said, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. And that's Luke 1, 38. In the months that followed, her life wasn't going to be an easy one. Joseph almost left her, and likely would have if God hadn't intervened. Then, when she was in the last months of her pregnancy, she had to travel to a different town. Today, the distance between Nazareth and Bethlehem takes about a two-hour car ride. Mary and Joseph had no luxury like that. And so the journey of over 70 miles would have been made on foot, on a wagon, or, as some traditions tell us, on a donkey. Then, when they finally arrived in Bethlehem, they, like so many others, had traveled there for the same reason. Over the years, when I was working in the hotel, I saw many travelers who traveled without making a reservation in the summer and in the fall. On more than one occasion, I had to tell them that there was no room for them. To see the exhaustion and desperation on their faces when they have stepped Stopped in towns for thousands, well, maybe not thousands, maybe a couple hundred miles, and realized that there's not going to be a room for them. One night, I remember turning away over 20 people. But that moment was today. The moment then was different. So the night that Jesus was born... You have a woman who is not only tired and exhausted, but she was likely in active labor and was just trying to find a place to stop. Finally, they did find a place. We call it a stable, but most likely it was not built of wood, but built into the walls of a cave. Mary gave birth in that room, likely cold and far from clean probably with the sounds of animals mixed in with her yells of pain. But I imagine that the moment he was placed in her arms for the first time, Mary forgot about all of that. In her arms, she held her son. In her arms, she held the Savior. In her arms, she held the Son of God. So when we tell the Christmas story, we need to remember the role that Mary played. Not much more than a child herself, she was a brave and courageous woman. She could have told Gabriel no, but she didn't. Jesus came in part because of Mary. So on this Christmas, even in these dark times, I remind you to remember the joy that we were given, in part, because of a brave young girl. A girl who had the courage to say yes to God. A girl that gave birth to the Messiah in a stable in Bethlehem. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. If you'll join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We also thank you for helping that one girl those thousands of years ago have the courage to say yes. To have the courage to help bring joy. And we thank you for your son who gave us that joy. And we ask 
that you help us remember to keep that joy with us always and to show it with others, especially now. Amen.